What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of What Just Happened. Essentially, I'm just recapping everything that happened this past weekend. So, let's get right into it. Week five was another crazy week. We had some really good and some really bad. But before we get into all that, let's go through some score recaps. Starting off with Thursday night's games, we had two of them, South Carolina 50, SC State 10, BYU 38, Utah State 26. I did watch some of this game and Utah State came in ready to play. They, it was only 17, 17 and a half, but what really cost them is just those nine points in the second half to uh, BYU's 21. Even looking at the stats sheet, you could see that it was a tight game. I mean, BYU had 397 total yards to Utah State's 392, 188 passing yards, 280 for BYU, 204 for uh, rushing yards for Utah State, 117 for BYU. Uh, that's kind of surprising. 4.8 yards per play, 6.6. .6. I mean, first down, I mean, it was a competitive game. It really was. I mean, if, if you look down the stat sheet, it, was, it looked like it was kind of down the middle for the most part. I mean, time of possession, 29-26 for uh, Utah State. And then uh, for uh, BYU, is 26-39. It's a good win by BYU, but you probably don't feel too good about that defense, especially giving up 204 yards to Utah State. And if you're looking ahead with Notre Dame coming up this week, if Notre Dame gets that run going, it's gonna be a long day, especially for BYU. Then you had Friday night game starting off with Tulane Houston. Houston losing a tight one there uh, to Tulane, who's on a good start, four and one to start the season. Um, overtime loss, you know, it is what it is, happens, but man, Houston, bad start to the season. I thought they were gonna be either the best group of five or one of the best group of five teams, but so far, it's not even close. And then the big game of the night was UCLA handling Washington at home. Oh, and they handled them. And if you watch this game, you could kind of tell early on that Washington just wasn't ready to play. Uh, UCLA came in, just smacked them in the mouth, essentially. Uh, going up uh, at half, what was it, uh, 26 to 10. Going into the fourth, it was really just, what, 40 to uh, 16. And then you had those two late touchdowns in the fourth with uh, two point conversions and makes it 32-40, you know, makes it look pretty. But really, UCLA handled uh, Washington. I will say the stats will kind of make it seem like it was closer, but really, it wasn't. Total yards, 499 uh, UCLA to Washington's 410. Passing yards, 315, 345. Rushing yards, 184 UCLA's to uh, Washington's 65. Yards per play, 6.9, 5.7. Uh, first downs, 27 to 24, third down deficiency, 10 of 14, eight of 15. Uh, fourth down efficiency, obviously four of four for Washington. They had to fight back. And then 0 of two for UCLA. Um, you know, two interceptions on Washington. So I mean, great for the UCLA defense. Uh, time of possession, 28 minutes for UCLA, 31 for Washington. So a good win by UCLA, you know, starting off conference play like that. Uh, they got Utah this week. Uh, they'll host that game. But man, that one feels like it could be the deciding game for the South. Um, you know, some, some could say USC still has, you know, some say in that, but I've seen USC's defense and they're atrocious. Their defense is so bad. I don't, they couldn't even put away an Arizona State team without a head coach. So U USC has Washington State this weekend and I'd be careful on that one because Washington State can score points. I mean, just look what they did against uh, Oregon. On that defense, they'll, they're gonna torch that USC defense. Um, but UC UCLA and, Air and Utah, big game this weekend. But moving on to Saturday's games, you know, there were some good ones, you know, Air Force beat Navy by three, but Michigan, Iowa, you know, I think I said it last week, but I, I, I mentioned if Iowa can't do anything offensively, Michigan could have a big day and that's what it looked like for most of the day. It was just a Michigan show. Uh, Michigan actually could be um, better than what I thought or either Iowa's offense is nowhere competent enough to score points, I guess. Um, defensively though, that defense, the Iowa defense is, is, is legit. Going into the fourth, it was 20 to zero. I mean, those two touchdowns in the, in the fourth, 14 points, 27, 14, you know, Michigan controlled that game though. And then one of the biggest and wildest games of the day, TCU hammering Oklahoma at home, 55-24. What happened? What happened? My goodness, that was, I, I don't, 
Two, two weeks ago, I was talking about how this Oklahoma team looked so much better with uh, Brent Venables uh, defensively, right? And they did, but man, these last two weeks, ugly, ugly showings by this defense, giving up 55 points to TCU. And I guess the fun fact of the day was Lincoln Riley's brother is the offensive coordinator for, for TCU. That's pretty crazy and funny. Dylan Gabriel, 7 of 16, 126. I will say that his inconsistency with his accuracy can be an issue at times, but this defense is the real problem. Giving up 668 yards to any team is, one, should be a fireable uh, offense because they, they had 361 yards rushing the ball, man. That just running the ball. Yards per play, 8.9, 307 passing. That's just ridiculous, ridiculous. And then 29 first downs. I mean, time of possession was, I mean, not a huge, you know, factor. 32 minutes to 27. I mean, only one fumble lost for Oklahoma, but eight punts. Total plays, 81 to 75. If you're an Oklahoma fan, this is an ugly loss. It's a, it's a bad loss. You just want to move on immediately, but and right now, it doesn't look like they're going to win the, the, the conference. You know, I, I, I was confident in that last week. Obviously, the loss to Kansas State definitely hurts a lot because now they're 0-2 in conference play. Kansas State beat Texas Tech 37-28. Kansas State off to a good start. Good for Kansas State. Wisconsin getting hammered by Illinois 34-10. That was nuts. And then Wisconsin firing Paul Chris. I would have not done that. I mean, you're near the midway point of the season. I mean, now your team could be unmotivated. I mean, no head coach. I mean, that's their guy, right? I mean, we'll see how the season plays out, but you know, Wisconsin, I think I mentioned this last week after the loss to Ohio State, not what it was. I mean, definitely struggling. Minnesota losing to Purdue. What? The Big Ten West is a complete mess. And I don't even know where to begin at. Like Purdue beating Minnesota, who had that on their bingo card? Looking at the stat sheet, I gotta give credit to Purdue. I gotta give it. They ran the ball 160 yards. That's, that's impressive, especially on this uh, defense that, you know, held uh, Michigan State to, I think, under, uh, what was it, uh, 60 or something? I can't remember. Aiden O'Connell, 27 to 40. 199, two interceptions. Tanner Morgan, 18 of 33, 257, and three interceptions. And Purdue ran the ball well, and they stopped the run really well. Under 50 yards rushing, 47 for uh, Minnesota, 257, you know, passing, total 304 to 359. Uh, yards per play, 5.2 to Purdue's 5.4, you know, first downs. I mean, the score was. It felt, it looks like a Big Ten game, honestly. Um, like a traditional Big Ten game. That's what it looks like. And you got to give a lot of credit to Purdue here. Haven't ran the ball super well all season or in past seasons either. Um, came in, 160 rushing. That's impressive. I'd like Jeff Brom at Purdue. Um, and if you can, if anybody, if there's a team out there that can steal Jeff Brom away from Purdue, they will have a great coach. Jeff Brom makes that that talent that that talent at purdue better than what it is because i'm telling you right now purdue is nowhere near as good as uh, as good as minnesota great job by purdue going in there you know on the road an undefeated minnesota team looking for a win number five but being spoilers man spoiler boilers go for them boston college beating louisville 34 33 utah handling oregon state 42 16 Wake Forest beat Florida State 31-21 in a fun game. North Carolina defense shows up against Virginia Tech. Penn State beats Northwestern by 10, 17-7. Ohio State continues to roll teams. Rutgers 49-10. Oklahoma State and Baylor, you know, 36-25. What a fun matchup that was. Maryland beat Michigan State 27-13. Kansas getting another win, uh, this time over Iowa State 14-11. Alabama beating Arkansas 49-26. UConn getting a win this weekend, beating Fresno State 19-14. Mississippi State beats Texas A&M 42-24. LSU beat Auburn 21-17. And what I think was one of the biggest games of the day, NC State at Clemson. 
And I want to start off with this. Will Shipley fumbled out of the end zone. I will say that. He fumbled out of the end zone. It should have been NC State ball at the 20. Officiating has been terrible, especially college uh, to begin the season. I mean, there's so many colleges, so many teams, a lot of officiating crews. They're not going to get it right. It is what it is. You just have to roll with it. But that was a missed call. But that's not the reason they lost. The reason they lost is... NC State couldn't run the ball. They had 34 rushing yards. When you become one dimensional, it's easy to attack that offense because all you have to do is stop one thing you do well and or one, one aspect of your offense. And I think that's one of the main reasons that they lost. It's just they couldn't run the ball effectively. At half, it was only a three point game, 10 to 13. And heading into the fourth, it was only a seven point game, 13, 20. But really though, these two teams were almost identical. First downs, 20 a piece. Third down efficiency, five of 14, six of 14. Fourth down efficiency, one of two, zero of zero. Uh, total play, 69 to, you know, Clemson 68. Punts, four, three. Penalties, 11, uh, NC State for 91 yards, uh, nine, Clemson for 95. It also doesn't help that NC State gave away the ball twice. Tough loss for NC State, but man, great win for Clemson. Tough game. Then you had Georgia and Missouri. I made that awful joke last week of, is Kent State the second best team? But I mean, <laughs> is Missouri the second best team? I mean, wh what exactly is happening with Georgia? Is it impressive that they came back and won or is it a concern? I'm, I'm a little bit on the uh, in the middle now. We'll have to wait and see another week. But right now, I, you gotta be a little bit concerned. I mean, I know it's on the road at Missouri, but still. Georgia Tech beat Pitt 26-21. USC barely put away Arizona State with a late touchdown, 42-25. Oregon beat Stanford 45-27. Stanford is terrible, really bad. Um, Oregon, tough opening game against Georgia. But outside of that, they've looked good. They've looked good. Sunday, we also did get an extra game. Florida, Eastern Washington, 52-17. Uh, game got moved because of the storm. But man, here are some of the takeaways that I got from this past week. Michigan might be the second best team in the Big Ten. They got Indiana and then Penn State, but they should handle Indiana fairly easily. Um, and then that Penn State game, if they can handle Penn State, there really isn't anybody left on the schedule besides Ohio State. And that one, you could probably make it a toss up at that point if they're both undefeated. Oklahoma defense, not fixed. Not fixed at all. I'm not going to say this is all Brent Venable's fault. He didn't recruit all of these players. These aren't his players. But I will say that the last guy didn't lose to Kansas State. So yeah, Friday you'll have Nebraska Rutgers, Houston, Memphis, uh, Colorado State, Nevada, uh, UNLV, San Jose State. And then looking at some of the big games this Saturday, Arkansas, Mississippi State, Tennessee, LSU, TCU, Kansas. Texas, Oklahoma, Utah, UCLA, Washington State, USC, BYU, Notre Dame, Texas A&M, Alabama, and Florida State, and NC State. But there's a lot of really great games this coming weekend. But that's going to wrap it up for me, guys. Go check out the TikTok, the Instagram, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see y'all next week.